Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Andrew Warren, and for today's video, I'm going to be talking about some recent stock purchases that I made. I actually made these purchases about a week ago or so, but I never did do an update video on YouTube talking about these purchases just yet. So this video has been long awaited. It has been a while since I actually made these purchases, but I never did specifically let you all know in a specific analysis video dedicated to that stock purchase where I talk about the stock, I break it down, I discuss why I purchased it and my predictions for the future. So in this video, that's what we're going to be doing. And by the way, if you do enjoy videos like these, please make sure to smash that like button, drop a like on this video. It really does help me out and it helps these videos get recommended to newer viewers as well. I'm really trying to grind out this channel this year and I would love to hit 10,000 subscribers sometime soon in the next upcoming months or so. So if you would like to help that happen and are interested in these videos, feel free to subscribe as well. 85% of the watch time on my channel is actually from non-subscribers, so feel free to subscribe. But anyways, back on to the main topic. As you can see, with my stock portfolio I only have three main holdings three main stocks in which I have a large investment into each of them primarily the largest investment that I have is Microsoft the second largest is Tesla and the third largest is Apple and this fourth one right here is just a free stock that I have that I've been waiting to go up to its normal price tag to sell but as you can see there's only three stocks that I'm focused on in my portfolio and just to give you a piece of logic behind my thinking of this small amount of diversification with my portfolio, the goal that I have is to not just maintain my wealth, but to grow my wealth. And the main way to do this is to avoid diversification. And keep in mind, anything that I say in this video is not to be considered financial advice. It is simply just me sharing my thoughts and opinions about the market and the moves that I'm making, and also my thinking behind the moves that I make as well. But I need to emphasize, there's a, a famous common quote by Warren Buffett that basically says diversification is to defend against ignorance. It's a guard against ignorance. So when I think that I have done enough research to be confident in a stock to where I believe that I can avoid diversification, then that's when I decide to act on it. For example, like we have with Microsoft and Tesla and Apple, I have enough faith in these stocks and the research that I've performed on these to where I think I can purely just hold these three stocks instead of having like 50 stocks in my portfolio or having these three stocks and then a majority of my investment wealth into an index fund or an ETF like VO. And I actually sold out VOO to put more money into Tesla stock into Microsoft. So my logic and thinking with this portfolio goes along with a famous quote stating that if you want to preserve your wealth or maintain your wealth, then diversify. But if you want to grow your wealth, then concentration is the key. And I understand that with this concentration comes a huge aspect of risk. There is a lot of risk regardless of how much research I've done behind a stock because there's always that unknown factor. There's always these unknown events that happen just like with the whole Rona situation, like how we never would have expected that to have happened and it happened and affected the market in such a tremendous way as you can see from my all-time chart right here. So when I have these three stock holdings, I understand there is a lot of risk to that. However, I do believe that the research that I have done will do well for me in the future in terms of my growth out of these stocks. And the stocks that I do hold currently are ones that I plan holding for a very long time. I'm a long-term investor, so when I invest, I think about the next 40 years or so. So jumping on to the purchase that I recently made, I purchased about $1,500 in Microsoft stock. And to just go ahead and break down these purchases and the statistics for this stock, as you can see, my average cost is about $171. I own 193 shares. It takes up about 45% of my portfolio, so an absolutely tremendous amount. And the total market value is about $36,000, and my investment is about $33,000. So for the total return, we are at plus 9.34% right now, or plus about $3,100. And keep in mind, this was actually a higher percent, but like I said earlier, I sold $32,000 in VOO and put a significant amount of money from that into Microsoft. So the percentage in growth decreased. It was a lot higher. And my average cost used to be at like $159 or $160, but I've purchased a lot recently in the one. 83 price range so jumping down into the purchase receipts as you can see this is one i've already covered in a video so we're not covering this one but these are the two big purchases that i made that i have not covered just yet that are for this video so as you can see i purchased two shares at a price of 180 dollars 95 that was on may 27th at 302 p.m and then of course i purchased six more shares 
at a price of $184.02 at 351 p.m. on May 29th. So I did pay a lot more on May 29th, but this was just one of those situations where on May 27th, I have no idea where the stock's going in the future. So I just bought regardless, not knowing whether it will increase in the upcoming days or decrease in the upcoming days. So that is a risk that you do take if you have cash on the side that you plan on investing in the future. If you find a good price that you like and you make a small purchase, but you don't put all of your money into it, then you do take the risk of the share price increasing in the future and you having to pay more. But that is always one of those situations where hindsight is 2020 and you can't predict the future so when it comes to buy-in prices as long as you're not paying an extreme premium then I don't think it's such a big deal even when I'm purchasing at 184 I'm still happy with because I think this stock will perform well in the long term and another huge aspect of this stock that I need to emphasize is the fact that it is still under fair value according to the Robinhood Gold Morningstar research report as you can see it is three stars out of five and the fair value is 196 so out of all of the stocks in the stock market that are currently overvalued, I mean, you have stocks that I absolutely love like Tesla, but it is still overvalued if we compare it to the Robinhood Gold Research Report. And the fair value of Tesla stock is like $730 and it's actually at like $880 right now. So there's a lot of stocks out there that are overvalued. Apple stock is overvalued. I know a fair price for that is like $240 and the stock right now is like $330. So there are so many stocks out there that are overvalued right now. And it's one of the main reasons people are very cautious because individuals are saying this is not realistic to what is happening to our surrounding conditions and all of the stuff like that. So that is why many people are cautious because it seems like the market has returned to normal before the whole Rona situation when the Rona situation isn't actually over with yet. So that's where a lot of caution does come from. So with this, I just want to emphasize that a stock like Microsoft, one that performs well consistently, if you look at the earnings report, it has beaten earnings per share every single time since Q1 2019, and that's as far back as Robinhood goes, it has probably beaten it just as consistently even before Q1 2019. So I just want to emphasize with all of this that Microsoft is under fair value, and it's actually a pretty good number under fair value. It's about $10 under fair value right now. And also keep in mind that with Microsoft stock, you also get a dividend payment as well. So as you can see right here, dividend yield of 1.12 and I have an upcoming dividend on June 11th that's just about a week away it's pending for $57.63 this is 51 cents per share and this dividend is for me owning 113 shares and I currently own 193 as you can see so this sort of references the idea of how I've purchased a lot of Microsoft stock just recently before it was able to count the whole 193 shares so I'm getting 51 cents per share that I own in Microsoft stock in addition to the fantastic growth that we've seen so far. And if you look at the past five years as well, this stock is a fantastic performer, almost 300% in the green over the past five years. And keep in mind, this is a huge instance that really doesn't happen very often. It's a, it's a rare situation that a stock grows this consistently and performs this well every single year. That's like a 30 to 60% gain per year. And then of course, just to address some other aspects of Microsoft as well, we have the market cap, which is 1.42 trillion. And then of course we have the CEO Satya Nadella. A lot of people contribute the recent success of Microsoft to this CEO because it has been said that he has turned around the company especially I think he has worked at Microsoft for like 20 years before actually becoming the CEO so that does emphasize that he knows the insides and outs of Microsoft including what it's like to be a CEO and what it's like to be a worker so I do think that that's an important aspect and just talking about the services that Microsoft does provide of course we have programs like Azure Microsoft Office stuff like that but then we also of course have cloud computing we have Microsoft Outlook which is their email service they of course own Xbox as well which is one of the major console competitors against the Sony PlayStation in my opinion this last generation the Xbox has lost the console war and with the upcoming console generation as well I think Xbox will lose again Sony is just on point right now with what they're doing but keep in mind that Microsoft does have exclusives and there are certain aspects to Xbox consoles that the PlayStation ones don't have such as a lot of backwards compatibility I believe the new Xbox is supposed to be able to play every single game from every single generation which is absolutely huge but I'm not completely sure on that just yet that's something
something that Sony is not doing just yet. But the game console products as a part of Microsoft are actually not a huge aspect compared to like the cloud computing and many other aspects of this company where they gain revenue from as well. And as we know, Microsoft recently invested into OpenAI. I believe last year they invested a significant amount into that, which is to democratize AI, which basically means they want to be the good guys that are in control of AI instead of it getting into the wrong hands where one company or one conglomerate is so advanced in AI where they can basically control the rest of the world. Microsoft has actually invested a lot of money into open AI, ensuring that the right people are in the hands of that power. So that's another huge aspect as well. And keep in mind that Elon Musk is also a founder of open AI. So not only is Elon the head of Neuralink, SpaceX, Tesla, but he's also a founder of OpenAI as well, in which Microsoft does have a piece of that in terms of an investment. So if you want to invest in OpenAI, this is sort of like a way to indirectly do that since Microsoft does have a partial holding in that company. So I do think that that is pretty cool. And I just wanted to share this video with you all, update you all on the recent purchases that I've been making, justify those purchases, and explain my reasoning behind it. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. And like I said, if you did, please make sure to smash that like button, drop a like on the video. It really does help me out. And if you would like to begin investing, feel free to use my referral links down in the description below. If you sign up with those links, then we'll both get some free stocks, which is pretty awesome. But I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Stay safe out there.